able to move it. We had to turn it back over to them and punt it. And Mark Simon did a great job. But boy, what a big play Johnny Steed came up with right there. And uh, Chad Henney came up with the with the fumble recovery that far. Well, here's Johnny Smith again, and uh, he fumbles it, Coach. Well, we had a good drive, and we took the ball down. And Johnny's going in to score, and he just lost the handle on it, just about a foot this side of the goal line. And dead gone it, they fell on it, and of course it was a touchback and, and their ball. But again, great pressure right there by Chad and by Johnny Steed and Steve Spiewak and and uh, Ty Ankerman, again, a great, great job out of those four front guys. Putting pressure, we had six sacks in the ball game. Well, there's another turnover. You had four turnovers in the first half. Right? Well, that's Chad, uh, you know, reaching out and, and grabbing him there and uh, and uh, loses the ball. And I can't remember who came up with that fumble recovery right there. But, boy, what a great time. But, now, John, this just doesn't happen to a good football team. And we'll certainly correct that, I'll guarantee you. But uh, to have a field goal blocked with down there that close and, and not taking advantage of a scoring opportunity like that, you know, uh, we've just got to do a better job. Tommy Rotello, another interception. And look at this fine run. Tommy looks like a half back <laughs> there. And, and look how many missed tackles on the play. And what an intense competitor he is. And Tommy had another great game for us and another interception. And, of course, I think this is about 18 games in a row now that we have had an interception. All right, here comes Troy with a nice run. Troy, you know, played another fine football game to play, you know, his lack of experience, and he's getting better and better. And, of course, he had some good impressive keeps in the ball game, and we know that he's not going to be able to give us a 15- or 20-yard run uh, but it, and consistently, but yet if he can keep the chains moving, and we average, you know, four yards per play in, in this ball game. Well, that led to a Mark uh, Manafo touchdown, so uh, you're back on top, Coach. And here's a nice run. Well, that's a nice run by Mark, and, of course, we got him going really playing hard to the outside there. Linebackers were running in there a good bit, and, uh, you know, we felt like we'd come in with a counter game, and it was good for us. And we didn't want to put this kind of pressure on Mike, but we ran the clock down. But uh, decided we try it anyway, and, you know, John, he almost made that. That would have been a 59-yard field goal. <laughs> it was close. Okay, you're up 10-7. to 7. I'm sure you had a few choice words at halftime, Coach. You had four turnovers. Well, the game was going just about like we thought. I thought we should have had more points. There's no question about that. And I told him, I said, hey, you know, if we don't come out of the blocks real quick and give this team, because they gained some confidence in that opening ball game, then we were going to have a dogfight on our hands. And that's exactly what it turned out to be. All right, you got to be happy with the drive. Let's go back out to second-half action. And at this point, Coach, this drive's going to be one of your best, I thought, of the season so Eight, far. 80 yards and 11 plays, and I was so pleased with the poise. And I told our offense, I said, we've got to take that ball now. We've got to put points on the board. We, we changed our game plan a little bit, not a great deal, and started attacking the nub side of our unbalanced formation. And uh, Troy did a great job pitching uh, in the open field there, and Mark did a great job. Watch the blocking by Johnny Smith there. And this was a fine 24-yard run by by Mark, and you know, Mark is giving us the same thing that Kelly Pittman gave us outside. Johnny's doing a great job There's blocking. There's Johnny getting in. Exactly, and Johnny's such a good inside runner. You can't hardly find him there. But I'll tell you one thing, he wasn't going to turn that one loose. I mean, <laughs> 11 plays, 80 yards, four and a half minutes, Coach, and you got a you got a 10-point lead and a really a great drive, but they come back, although you're still playing tough D. Well, we're playing great D, and watch that pressure right there. I'm telling you what, Chad Hennings, and again, we had six sacks in the game, and you know, uh, I can't say enough about the pressure that our defense, they keep working there, uh, you know, against size odds up there all the time. And then, of course, they held them. They had to punt the ball. And here's Troy, a fine run by Troy. A big 24. play, 24 yards. And again, Troy, you know, uh, we, we know that, uh, again, he might not be able to give us that consistently, but, hey, he shows us he can do it whenever they give him the seam to run. Again, tough inside yardage there by Mark Manafo. And uh, all we're trying to do is move the chains, Johnny. And, and uh, we had uh, 357 yards rushing in the game. And this young man had over 100 yards. And a uh, tough, tough effort all night long. Uh, here comes Mike with another field goal. Another field goal, and of course this one was from uh, 22 yards out, and uh, and uh, you know Mike, I, he is what academy football is all about, John. There's not a guy in the world that's worked any harder to develop his leg strength than Mike, and uh, you know Mike's been so patient. He's a junior, and uh, didn't even make our traveling squad last year. This guy had a good game, Sammy Garza. Oh, of course, you know he's going to be one of the premier passers in our conference. With a great hit there by Steve Sigler, I guarantee you. Here's Terry Mackey coming in, and he's going to make a sack for three yards. Fine, loss. fine sack. Good pressure there by Ty. Good, good, good pressure there by Johnny Steed. And, boy, Johnny's going to be a force to be reckoned with this year, and, and he's played extremely well both games. But, uh, you know, <clears throat> here's a situation where they, they executed very well to Collins. And, boy, Garza is a fine passer. And if you give him time back there, he is, he, he, you know, he is going to be very, very effective for them. And they're going, to, they're going to move the ball, and they're going to win a lot of football games down at UTEP this year. They're a big play type of offense, really, aren't they? They really are. And, of course, here's a fine play on Garza's part right here. Reversing his field, and the type of coverage we had, we didn't leave the backside back, 
flat open, but what happened is that we came with the receiver across there, and when he broke and reversed his field, we just didn't have anybody back there on that side. But boy, this couldn't happen at a better time, and Terry comes up with a fumble recovery right here inside the 20-yard line, and again, that's typical of our defense, just like it was last year. They were able to take the ball, move down the field, but down when they got down inside that 20-yard line, our defense really got tough. Nice little screen pass to Mark. Well, this was a fine read on Troy's part, and Troy showed a lot of poise there. Uh, we had a pass called downfield. He read the read the underneath coverage there, and a halfback was open. Boy, what a fine run by John Harvey right here. And, uh, you know, the guy's got great speed. Uh, Bob Stowell told me before the game that John was as talented as any back that they had ever had and probably had as much or more talent than any back they ever had at the time that he was coaching the University of Washington. Coach, well, that's a pretty high compliment to a young man. They go to Parker for the touchdown. They kick the extra point, and, hey, you are in trouble. You're down by a point at 151. I know you work on the drive at the end of the game a lot. Here we go, Pat Evans. Well, the first play, we, we go to Pat on the fullback draw, and, of course, he gets us out, and that gives our team some uh, confidence there. But, uh, John, this is not by accident. We work on this at least two or three times. Uh, Biggest uh, play of the game. Exactly. Uh, this was a big play. It was a fourth down and sixth play, and uh, we gave the ball to our fullback because we knew that they would be playing us outside because we'd been running the option, you know, outside. And then, of course, uh, Mike comes through with the 44-yard field go and he couldn't come at a better time with one second left. I talked to Mike right after the game. He told me he didn't even know how far out it is. He just is so he's concentrating so much. He goes out there and he thanked, of course, uh, Mark for holding and, of course, uh, Mr. Bullard for the snap and it was a perfect field goal. Oh, it was a perfect field goal. Well, excuse me, and it went right down the middle, John, and it wasn't off one, one, one inch to either right or left. It was right down the middle. And I couldn't be more happy for Mike. And like I say, he's worked so hard and so deserving, and uh, he's just typical of what uh, Air Force Academy football is all about. Quickly, Coach, I know a drive like that has got to really help the offense. Well, I think it will, and, you know, again, our offense, uh, uh, the thing that I was so proud was that we were able to run that ball 14 more plays than UTEP did uh, the other night. Our intention going into the game was ball control, and we were able to keep that ball six minutes longer. So our offense did improve a great deal. All right, Coach, we're going to come back and have our weekly Academy Life features, meet one of the coaches, and one of the players up close and personal will have that right after this. Who takes care of Falcon Stadium? Here's Lee Douglas. For most of us, taking care of our own backyard is a full-time job. But this is not your typical backyard. It's 100 yards plus some 46,000 plus seats, all known as Falcon Stadium. And stadium manager Tony Guerrero talks just like a proud father when he looks out over his baby. Tony's been stadium manager since 62, and during that time, Falcon Stadium has come to be known as one of the best facilities in the country. From the press box down to the five-yard line, there's not a bad seat in the house, and as far as a playing surface, there is none better anywhere. It would take an hour to describe all of Tony's duties, but in a nutshell, he's responsible for preparing the stadium for game days. From the playing field to seating, restrooms, press box, TV crews, and so on, and he does them all very well. But first and foremost, his reputation is as an expert groundskeeper. When we have uh, TV every year, uh, I get letters from different universities wanting to know how we keep our field up, wanting to know how we put our uh, decorations down, our end zone, the, the falcon in the middle of the football field, and, and so I write back to them and let them know how we do it. And I suppose Tony's greatest accomplishment goes back to October 20th of 84. Air Force and BYU on national TV, and the field is in great shape. What makes this such a great accomplishment is this is what Falcon Stadium looked like just three days earlier. A huge snowstorm in a short period of time leaves it a mess, and there was even talk of switching sites. But Tony soon got rid of all that nonsense. Uh, the highlight is the BYU game, because uh, uh, we weren't sure if we were going to get uh, the snow off in time for the game. And uh, boy, that was very critical because it was a televised game. And if you look at the schedule, Air Force hosts BYU on December 6th, another televised game. And Tony and crew will be ready if it should snow again. For Air Force Football 86, I'm Lee Douglas. Oh, boy, Tony does quite a job. Oh, boy, Felix, Tony, John, yeah. and, and his whole crew down there. You know, he's just one of the, the typical guys behind the scenes. It doesn't get the credit that he so well deserves. But, John, I guarantee we've got as fine a playing surface as any school in America. All right, we're going to meet another guy that has uh, quite a bit to do for the Air Force Falcons right now, and he's defensive secondary coach, Cal McCombs. That's a good one. Okay, work it on over, Matt. Work it on over. 
For defensive secondary coach Cal McCombs, you might have thought he would have worried a great deal in the offseason about how he was going to replace the likes of Scott Thomas, Juan Wilson, and A.J. Scott. But even though this year's starting unit of Tom Rotello, Steve Ziegler, Mike Tolliver, and E.J. Jones lack, other than Rotello, a lot of starting experience, Coach McCombs believes they have as much talent as last year's defensive backfield had. The group we got now are just... Uh, well, we've got just as much talent as we had last year. I, I really believe that. And now it's just a matter of us uh, getting to know each other a little bit better as far as uh, what to expect out of each other as far as playing as a defensive secondary unit. If you're going to be successful on defense in the Western Athletic Conference, where most teams like BYU and San Diego State like to put the ball in the air a lot, you'd better have a good and sophisticated secondary. The Falcons do, and part of the reason is the help they have gotten from their friends in Denver. We've been fortunate to have uh, the Denver Broncos.